Hello everyone, let us discuss about Collis fracture today. So it is one of the most important fracture of the forearm. So it is the fracture of the distal end of the radius at the corticocancellous junction which is 2.5 cm from the articular surface in case of osteoporotic females at menopause with typical displacements. Okay, so we have to remember some points here. What are those? Firstly, it is the fracture of the distal end of the radius where at the corticocancellous junction. Where does that lie? That lie 2.5 cm from the articular surface. Okay, so in case of osteoporotic females, okay, we know that at menopause due to hormones, the um, bones are uh, prone to fracture because they are osteoporotic and there are some typical displacements in this type of fracture. So what is the mode of the injury? The mode of the injury is the fall on the outstretched hand with wrist in extension. Like when our wrist is in extension and we fall like this, then we will have a uh, Collis fracture. Okay, so the displacement which can occur in this fracture are dorsal displacement, dorsal tilt, lateral displacement, lateral tilt, impaction of the fragment, and supination. So we can remember two D's and two L's here and S I. Okay, so S I L D. So now uh, we know about um, dinner fork deformity which can occur in this type of fracture. It occurs basically in case of dorsal displacement and dorsal tilt. Okay, so D, D for dorsal and D for dinner fork deformity. So talking about clinical um, features, the clinical features are first the typical features of the fracture. What are those? Swelling and pain and deformity cause there is displacement here what type of deformity as i have already mentioned dinner for deformity so we can see uh, in the picture here there is fracture of this uh, there distal part of the radius at the corticocancellous junction which cause the dinner for deformity we can see this shape here it looks like the dinner for after this on examination there is tenderness of course because there is fracture so there must be tenderness and there is irregularity of the lower end of the radius as we have deformity then the radial stylate process come to lie at the same level or a little higher than the all style ulnar stylate process so this is more uh, reliable than the dinner for deformity because Normally, the tip of the radial stylet process is about 13 mm distal to the tip of the ulnar stylet process. But what happens in case of this fracture is that the radial stylet process come to lie at the same level. Okay, so um, if this is seen in the examination on X ray finding, then it is definitely a Collis fracture. So, for treatment, when there is undisplaced fracture, then dorsal splint can be done until swelling is decreased okay then after swelling is decreased cast is uh, kept for four weeks so and then x-ray is taken at two weeks to check if fracture has not slipped so if there is displacement then at first reduction under anesthesia is done so for this traction and counter traction is done so in counter traction and counter traction as we can see here here the um, assistant uh, assistant surgeon uh, flex the elbow and pull the elbow from here while the surgeon uh, does the handshake with the patient and um, uh, pull the uh, wrist okay so in this method the fracture can be reduced then the distal um, fragment impaction with one white wrist is uh, manipulated in palmar flexion then dorsal plate, plate cast can be used which is also known as Collis cast then arm uh, must be elevated for one to two days and um, at seven to ten days flex x-ray is taken and the fracture usually heals at six weeks so this is all about Collis fracture if you like this video Please subscribe for further such videos. Bye-bye.